Hey everyone, today I'm going to be defending Pokemon Legends Arceus and honestly I didn't think I would actually be defending this game or really any Pokemon game uh, for quite some time because like many other uh, people around my age, mid 30s, uh, I fell out of love with Pokemon. I am a former Pokemon fan, not a current one and it's interesting because someone's going to call me out and say, but Nate you defended Pokemon, let's go and I'm going to just say that was a unique situation because obviously as an old school Pokemon fan, uh, I am a big fan of Generation 1. So it was really exciting to see Generation 1 reimagined in the way that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee did it. And I did actually enjoy those games. But again, I had a lot of nostalgia and affinity for that first generation. So it's not really necessarily saying that it was a quality game although I feel like it was, uh, more so that I was obviously going to get some more enjoyment out of that based on nostalgia than I would most other Pokemon games. So, when it comes to Legends Arceus, obviously I have, you see my initial reaction, it's what I've been wanting since I was a child, just in terms of the scope and the ambition of the game, but I can't help but notice, and this, th th this is interesting to me, that there's a large chunk of people, especially on the internet, that seem to be reacting to Pokemon Legends Arceus in a very curious way. In fact, the way they're reacting to it, I understand, but I also think isn't being fair. Uh, I actually tweeted about this, so if you saw my tweets on it, you already know what I'm talking about. But we're going to be talking about the game's visual styles and why I'm going to defend the way the game looks, uh, even though it might seem illogical at times. But first, we're going to obviously go over some of the negative comments. They're all public. I'm just going to take ones that are uh, being commented out on the Pokemon official Twitter account, uh, people replying to some of the stuff about that, about how the game looks, because I feel like there is some misguidance here. Now before I do that, i got to remind you we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED system. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed. We will be announcing the winner during a live stream that I'll be setting up next month. Um, the live stream is actually going to happen in the first week of October, uh, but we're going to give you guys about a month run up to make sure you set your notifications so you can be there live. But just to be subscribed, that's how you enter. All right, so let's get into some of these comments, and I'm going to first pull off comments um, from Nintendo's very, or I should say Pokemon's very first tweet on the at Pokemon account, um, talking about how, you know, your adventure will be set in the natural majesty of the Hisui region in an age when it was rare for people in Pokemon to live in harmony, and um, it just shows, like, some initial clips from the trailer they showed, and there's a re reply to it with the Jubilife Village. Um, and here's what some people say. Um... You know, Diamond Aura says, uh, the land still looks more barren and less stylized than the likes of Breath of the Wild or Xenoblade. But I really like the concept of Legends, at least. Maybe Monolith Soft can help out since they seem really good at polishing this type of thing. Uh, Wasagaras re replies to that person and says, yeah, the game still looks very rough. But it's nice to see a bunch of improvements over Sword and Shield and all this innovation in gameplay setting and more. And if they don't give up on this format of games, uh, this will be like X and Y of Legends and the next one may look way better. But again, still agreeing that the game looks rough. Um, uh, moving on down the list, we see uh, Julio Reyna saying the game looks ugly. So no, people would like to have the level of quality of Pokemon Snap. But well, they got whatever this is. Uh, then you see Josh saying, please, please improve the graphics, textures from nature, water, trees, and sun slash moonlight. We are still five months apart. Please. Now, honestly, I could go on and on and on. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of these comments throughout all of uh, the Pokemon Company's tweets about this, and I've seen the comments as well on the official trailers on YouTube. Um, so, like, these comments are very, very common. If you're watching any coverage of this on any YouTube channel, you're going to come across people saying that the game looks ugly, uh, that it, it, it's a shame that this game can't, can't even look as good as a game that was built for Wii U and Breath of the Wild. And I actually made a nice little response to this. So I'm going to read my own tweets because why not quote myself? Um, because I feel like I had a really, really good take on this. Uh, and I want to make sure that I get my take correct and then we'll expand upon it. So I said, I have seen some out there attacking Pokemon Legends for not looking pretty. 
and looking visually behind Breath of the Wild. I think there is some truth, but also some missing the mark with these expectations. On the surface, Pokemon is one of the largest IPs in the world. As one of the largest IPs in the world, it should have one of the largest development teams in the world to go with it. Just like Rockstar does, or even closer to home, the Zelda team that's now 300 plus with the addition of the seemingly now permanent extra team from Monolith. Having such a large dev team in theory should allow Pokemon to be treated like a AAA IP. Uh, like it is, and fundamentally looking stunning, just like Breath of the Wild. However, this misunderstands Pokemon. Legends was never going to be a visual stunner because Pokemon is not an IP that gets treated the way Zelda is. They don't spend five to six years making a Pokemon game. And yeah, folks, that's how long it took to make Breath of the Wild. Look how long it's taking to make Breath of the Wild too. They don't get that amount of time to make a game. All right? If you're lucky, you get two years and even then it's not the full team as they release remakes along the way at no point does game freak get five years of dev time to make any game it's not about the power of switch it's that pokemon is so much more than a game there are animated series and other major side things pokemon go uh, and everything works together this creates tight deadlines and strict release schedules now, it can be argued on the gaming side that they should stop caring about that, take their time. But this has worked for them for over two decades, so a drastic change like that is hard. Look how long it's been since they trusted someone beyond themselves to remake a Pokemon game. 20 years, really 20 plus, first time ever with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Legends Arceus has had more time in development than pretty much any Pokemon game since Generation 1. That's why it's as ambitious as it is. Three years of dev time, so it seems, but that's not three years with the full team. And most of it came during a pandemic. Pokemon has never been a visual feast either, and this is important to note. So anyone that expects Legends to look as good or better than Breath of the Wild visually, I don't think are Pokemon fans as Pokemon has never been about the visuals. Reality is, Pokemon could be more, could do more, but it requires rethinking their entire release schedule, and the Pokemon company ain't doing that. So no, I'm not upset that the game looks like Sword and Shield, basically, but open world. Who cares? I'm tired of games being judged solely on visuals. As long as they nail the gameplay at a playable FPS, I'm good. Pokemon is the one IP for sure targeted at kids and kids don't care and i can't emphasize that enough children do not care they don't you want proof look at the most popular games on my kid the most popular game on my kids right now is roblox not exactly a visually stunning game minecraft not exactly a visually stunning game among us fortnite none of these games are stunners they're not trying to blow your mind from a visual perspective and Pokemon doesn't either, and it never really has. It's never been the de facto go-to. And I get that new Pokemon Snap just came out and blew our minds visually. But new Pokemon Snap is a game built around visuals. It's a game about taking pictures of Pokemon in nature. It is supposed to be a visual feast because that's the whole premise of the game is to be a visual feast. It's not about catching Pokemon. It's about taking pictures of Pokemon. And in a setting like that, absolutely the visuals should be pushed. It also helps that a game like Pokemon Snap, or new Pokemon Snap in this case, exists outside of the normal release schedule of games. That's why a third party company made that game. Believe it or not, Game Freak didn't make new Pokemon Snap. Somebody else did. That allowed them to push the visuals further because they could spend more time making the game and the game is based on visuals. The mainline Pokemon games have never been about being a visual feast. Remember Sword and Shield and all the complaints? Oh, look at those N64 looking trees. Okay, but it's still the best looking tree we've ever seen in Pokemon history. Why? Because Pokemon is not a game intended for, vis for visual fidelity. It's not so trying to be Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild tried to appear, uh, well, appeal to a massively wide base of hardcore to core gamers. And Pokemon tries to appeal to children. I understand, by the way, that many adults play Pokemon. 
I'm going to be poke playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. So I'm going to be a, a mid-30s nobody playing Pokemon. And that's okay. Just because games are targeted at certain age groups doesn't mean that others can't enjoy it. And you're not strange for playing Pokemon into your teens, into your 20s, 30s, 40s for some people. There's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't change that the target of these games is towards children. And when I showed my children, who they like playing on PlayStation 5 and Xbox and PC and all that, and tablets and phones, and yes, on Switch, when I showed them the trailer for the game, you know what? Visuals wasn't even a thing on their mind. They just thought it looked really cool. And that's what I think people are missing here. Look, yes, all of us would love for Game Freak to take five, six years to make a game. In that time, if it took five to six years of development, you should expect something to the level of Breath of the Wild for a visual perspective, right? It, you know, people mentioned bringing Monolith in, bringing, Monolith is not going to come in and change the lighting system. They're not going to come in and retexture the game. They're not going to come in and add all new physics to, to say, the grass or whatever, right? They're not going to add new physics to the Pokemon. They're not going to come in and basically rebuild the game from the ground up. The game looks the way that it looks because that's what they could pull off in the set timetable they had to make this game. And in that timetable, the Pokemon company even took away remaking a game away from them so they could spend all their time, the core team, after the release of Sword and Shield and obviously the small amount of team that was working on the DLC. But once that DLC was done, they had the full team working on, well, on this. And honestly, the fact that they pulled this off in a two-year span is quite amazing. A two- to three-year span, they, they pulled off an open-world Pokemon game. That's amazing. We should be impressed that they were even able to do that. Now, I'm not saying you should be impressed from a visual perspective, but guys, this is an IP that just like, a few games ago was on the Nintendo 3DS and it had never been on any system even close to as powerful as Switch. We need to keep in perspective what Pokemon is. All of us want the open world, full exploration Pokemon game that looks as good as new Pokemon Snap, right? That's what all of us want. But the reality of making a game where you're snapping pictures versus a game that you're actively walking around in and exploring. Remember, it's on rails game, new Pokemon Snap, so it's preset courses. Um, you're not like that in an open world game. You can go anywhere. You can quote unquote do anything. Um, it's not as necessarily like, like if they tried to take new Pokemon Snap and put that in Legends Arceus, that exact style and that exact high fidelity the game wouldn't run very well. It would run at a snail's pace. Frame rates would be all over the place because one, Switch doesn't have any game that looks that good in an open world capacity. We've seen what open world games look like and Breath of the Wild is the best looking one on the platform. Even The Witcher 3 looks all right, but it doesn't look as good as Breath of the Wild, which was catered for Nintendo platforms. So we have to remember that just because Pokemon is arguably the largest IP in the world. Maybe it's not as large as Grand Theft Auto anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's not as, quite as large as Minecraft, but it's up there. It's in the pantheon of important IPs. It's an IP that says tell 10 plus million every single time, pretty much no matter what they do. It's an IP that had an app come out on phones and become the most popular phone app of all time and still today is among the top five most popular phone apps. And that's what, five years later? Isn't that insane? We just five year anniversary holy crap and it's still among the top five most popular apps on phones and that's crazy when you consider all the social media apps and tiktok and, and, and all that like you have all these social media apps and pokemon goes up there with them so let's keep in mind that while this is a massively important and successful ip we should have never expected pokemon legends arceus one to even exist in the first place the fact that we even have an open world pokemon game is shocking the fact that they let somebody else handle the remake so we could get this game is shocking. And they did this during a pandemic, and they're still releasing it in January, and it still looks as good as it does from a gameplay perspective. That is shocking. It also shows the incredible talent that must be at Game Freak to pull off this game that they're basically pulling out of their arses because we've been demanding it for so long, and the Pokemon company is like, what happens if we do try to make a Breath of the Wild style game? Because they're clearly 
looking at this as a Breath of the Wild style Pokemon game. There's no doubt about that. I don't think there's any doubt. Look at how they shot the trailer. Listen to some of the initial musical notes, which I can't play for you guys because the Pokemon Company are stooges when it comes to copyright claims on music. But the point is, if you listen to some of the notes in, 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 at some of the moments during that trailer, it sounds directly like music ripped out of, I mean, rip, ripped out of Breath of the Wild. I mean, you even had... Eric mentioning that he thought a few notes in a row almost sounded like Epona's song, for crying out loud. From the, the shots they did, the way you fly, right? You're, you're holding on to a bar uh, that's being flown by a Pokemon, and it's like, dude, that, that's such invoking of, 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 of the sailcloth and all that. Like, oh my gosh, it, it, it's very much calling out to Breath of the Wild fans, but also very much calling out to Pokemon fans and old school ones that have been waiting for this. I think a lot of old school fans have really reacted the same way to this that I have. And that reaction is, well, hey, this game looks amazing. It doesn't matter that it's not a visual stunner. We don't play Pokemon games for the best visuals. You want the best visuals? You look to Cyberpunk. You look to things from CD Projekt Red. You look to Rockstar. You look to Call of Duty. There are other avenues that try to get the best of the best visuals. Even now, Breath of the Wild 2 should be expected to have a, you know, a notch above Breath of the Wild's visuals and be maybe one of the most visually stunning games on Switch yet again. We look to those IPs for visual stunning stuff. Even new Pokemon Snap. But this? No, 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 no. We play Pokemon for the gameplay. Sometimes even for the story, but usually for the gameplay mechanics. That's why we play Pokemon. For the Pokemon themselves and the actual gameplay. We all want that visually stunning game. We all would love Game Freak to be given the manpower and the time to do something um, on a massive scale like Breath of the Wild. But we also have to remember that Pokemon isn't just a video game series. It's trading cards. It's phone apps. It's other free apps like Pokemon Unite. It's animated series and movies. There's so many moving parts and all of them are intermixed together that you can't even blame the Pokemon company at this point trying to keep everything on target. Because the moment they get off target is the moment that Pokemon can lose a little bit of its relevancy. And I know that feels weird when we're used to like Zelda games every five years, but what are they doing in between Zelda releases? Giving us something Zelda every year, Skyward Sword HD. We had Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity the year before. We had Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition the year before that. Breath of the Wild the year before that. Um, I can't remember what was before that, but the point is they keep giving us, you know, Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, Link's Awakening. Like they keep giving us other things between the major releases. Nintendo just has a lot of outside companies being trusted with that. And, and if, I think if Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl end up selling well, that's going to lead to a future where they do take more time making each new generation of Pokemon games. And that's one reason why Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl are actually quite important to the future of Pokemon. So my question to end all this video to you is, why are you excited or not excited for Pokemon Legends Arceus? And what do you think about the hundreds, if not thousands of complaints out there that the game is still not polished, that the game is still not a visual feast, that it's a shame or it's a blasphemy that it's not as good looking at least as Breath of the Wild. There are some people that actually think the game looks gorgeous, by the way. And I feel like those people fundamentally understand this is the best looking Pokemon game like for a core Pokemon experience that we've ever had. Now, there's other things we could debate about. You know, the fact that there's not going to be gym battles and all that. And we could talk about, um, you know, the differences in this game compared to a, a, a traditional Pokemon game. And there's plenty of criticism or plenty of uh, preferences one way or another that, that go into this. But when we talk just from a visual perspective, man, I really want to hear your guys' thoughts on this because I feel like Pokemon Legends Arceus is just being misunderstood by the wider gaming audience. And it's funny because these replies are happening on the official Pokemon accounts, which are followed by Pokemon fans and Nintendo fans. And I feel like maybe even some, maybe there's even a subset within the Pokemon community that just isn't appreciative of what this is. Pokemon Legends Arceus is taking the Pokemon franchise and flipping it on its head and trying something completely different and trying to reinvent the wheel. And that is exciting and hasn't happened pretty much ever. So is it perfect? Is it everything we want it to be? No. But if it does well, could they take more time developing the next one? Maybe. Especially if Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl do well and they can start trusting third parties with all their remakes. 
But then we have people complaining that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl still aren't the remix that they wanted. Can have it both ways. Not with Pokemon anyways. I know billion dollar franchise should be able to hire all the teams they want. I get it. But we still can't have it both ways. The, the, the tight scheduling isn't going to go anywhere. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am the Fanny Robo Gents from Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.